here at the Nature Center this morning with the state tree of Pennsylvania, the eastern hemlock right here. This is a very common tree, uh, usually in damp ravine type areas, but it's not quite as common to find them on the, the side of a mountain like we have here at the Nature Center. Uh, kind of unique in that respect here. Uh, but it is related to the pines that we have around here, as you can see. Uh, but the needles are a little bit smaller, so that's how you can kind of tell them apart from uh, white pines and, and other species that we have around here. Uh, small needles, flat needles, they have uh, little white lines on the bottom. Uh, eastern hemlock trees provide important habitat for uh, lots of species in Pennsylvania. A um, number of species of birds, like to nest in these trees, they make a, a small cone similar to a, a white pine cone, but a lot, a lot finer. Um, provides food uh, for certain types of wildlife. Um, these trees uh, are very acidic, the soil around them is very acidic, so uh, that allows for certain species of plants to grow uh, that like really acidic soil. Um, rhododendron and species like that will often grow uh, underneath them. But they're also very important for our state fish in Pennsylvania, which is the brook trout, because uh, a really interesting effect is caused by these trees growing in a forest. Because their needles are so close together, they're really good at blocking out sunlight and creating shade on the forest floor. And that is important in creeks uh, where the brook trout live. Uh, brook trout need really cold water uh, to, to survive and, and to spawn. Uh, so usually they will live in creeks that are underneath these trees because these trees provide just the right amount of shade to, to keep those creeks cold for them. Now our eastern hemlock trees are kind of in, in trouble in Pennsylvania these days. Uh, there's a little aphid-like insect called the hemlock lily adelgid that is attacking them. Uh, it is an invasive species, uh, came here from Asia, uh, where it feeds naturally on some of the native trees in that area of the world. But over here, our hemlock trees don't have the defenses to fight them off. Uh, so basically what happens is these insects suck the sap out of the needles, and then the trees aren't really able to photosynthesize uh, as well anymore um, as the needles start to die off then eventually it starts to kill off the entire tree. So uh, if you see hemlocks that are missing a lot of needles, that have a lot, have a lot of dead branches, that's usually a good sign that they're under attack by the hemlock woolly adelgid. Uh, now scientists are working really hard to find a way to naturally fight off the adelgid. Uh, there are some uh, treatments that have been uh, discovered in recent years, uh, but nothing is being applied uh, wide in a widespread way across Pennsylvania to fight off the adelgid yet. So hopefully uh, someday we'll have a more effective treatment for the trees and hopefully someday the trees will even uh, evolve uh, a resistance to these insects. This tree was really important historically around here uh, because the bark is high in tannic acid and that makes it very useful for tanning leather. Uh, so for many years here in the Gap, right by the Nature Center, uh, people actually did make leather from the bark of these trees and oak trees uh, that they harvested from the mountainside here. A little bit more about the tanning process, since this tree was used for tanning leather. Uh, at one time before we had uh, different types of uh, human-made chemicals uh, for tanning leather, uh, tree bark was the primary source of the, the acid that was needed to convert animal skins into uh, a usable product um, that we, we, we call leather. So basically what happened was they would harvest trees from the size of the mountain, but they would not use the wood itself. They would strip the bark from the trees. Uh, then the bark would be ground up and soaked in water, big vats of water. The acid from the bark would seep out and basically you would have these big bathtubs uh, of uh, acid water, tannic acid water, in different concentrations. Then you would dip your hides inside of that, the, those vats, and over time, uh, the acids would, would convert that skin in, into leather, which was used for a variety of different things here. Now this pond behind me here uh, did not used to be a pond. That was filled in with a spring in more recent years. Uh, historically, uh, that was a pit where they had a bunch of vats for making leather. Uh, so there were probably several dozen vats that would have been inside of this pit in the ground here. Stone building behind me here is where uh, they would process and dry the leather uh, before it was sold locally. Uh, the, there's been tanning in the Lehigh Gap here since at least 1840, probably before that, uh, as far as we can tell from records. Thanks for checking out our state tree. Uh, we will be highlighting a bunch of other plants that we have here around the Nature Center and a, a few other upcoming videos, uh, so be sure to check them out.